Nathan here from the ebookreader.com. For this video review, I've got the Pocketbook 360 Plus. So obviously it's got a unique little cover here. You pull this thing off like this and you snap it on back when you're reading. Um, as far as hardware goes, we've got this uh, USB mini port right down here. And then on the back, on the top side, we've got a micro SD card slot and this is the power button. And then on back, this thing slides off and you've got the battery under there and the reset button. So, um, you've got the little Mickey Mouse ears here for turning pages, and there's also the little nav controller right here. So this thing is pretty small. Here it is compared to the Kindle, just for quick size comparison. Obviously, one major difference is it's got a smaller screen. It's got a 5-inch screen. Um, let me show you the turn, the turn on here. I'm really impressed with the turn on. It takes only a couple of seconds to go to the home menu. Um, so this has got the 5 inch Visiplex screen, it doesn't have the newer Pearl screens, but the screen quality has improved over the previous Pocketbook 6 360. They've also added um, Wi-Fi um, and faster page turns, uh, faster processor on this uh, 360 plus model. So this is kind of a look at your home menu, you've got your layout for your different books. Um, this thing, registration will disappear once you register it and turns into a favorites for your favorite uh, books. You've got the calendar down here. There's a different application uh, for accessing your notes, and then you got photos and dictionary. There's some games in here in the application menu. So let me show you. I'll start off. Let's go ahead and show you how the books lay out. So it comes with a whole bunch of free books. There's a whole bunch of different languages here. You probably want to delete all these first off. So um, to delete them, you just hold down this button in the center, and then you get the options for viewing and sorting. So you can also view these as thumbnails, and you can also there's a couple different options here. Obviously, they're not thumbnails with folders, but in the book section. See, everything's done by, um, everything's got the, the folder layout as far as these pocketbook readers go. Um, so, this is what the book lays out like. This is the, I think this automatically opened with Adobe Viewer. Let me use the top button here, it's the forward button. So uh, there's a couple of different viewers. This is the Adobe viewer, and so with Adobe you've got some different options. Um, it doesn't have as many as the FB reader, which I'll show you in a second, but you do have the options. you got notes, dictionary. Um, for dictionary you just push this, and then you use your little nav controller button to go around the page. And then there's also, um, there's also different dictionaries you can set in here. Um, so there's some different options. Let's go back to the one thing I did is you can go in here and you can set all the buttons to have different functions. It's got key mapping in the settings down here and I like having a button to go to the home menu. It doesn't have one by default but I set so the power button takes you to the home menu um, to get back here quickly. So one thing I was talking about just there, um, like the other option you have for the viewing, kind of jumping around here but um, let's go back to the list. It's a little bit easier to navigate with the list view. So what I was saying is that that was showing Adobe Viewer with that particular book. Um, the cool thing about Pocketbook is when you hold down on the button right here, you get the other option for opening. You can open it with Adobe Viewer or FB Reader. Same goes with P PDFs. You got the Adobe Viewer for PDFs and you've got the option for PDF Viewer. It's got a little bit different features. So as you can see, the layout is completely different here with the, um, with the um, using FB Reader because you can go in and you can customize all the fonts. I went ahead and put in a bold font. I kind of like this one. Um, so that's the coolest thing about FB Reader is you go in here into settings. Um, and you can change all the different fonts. There's a whole bunch of different settings in here for um, you got uh, there you can add new fonts as well. Go ahead and add it to the folder and you've got these preset ones. There's actually quite a few presets in here. And then you get a preview of what it looks like down there. Uh, there's also different text encoding options. You got line spacing, margins, hyphenations on and off, and line breaks. Um, so hi the update mode is if um, it depends on how fast you want the page to just refresh. So let's go back out of here. So, okay, one thing you see, the page refreshes on every page. One thing you can do is you can go into settings and you can change that. So let me show you the settings menu. There's a whole bunch of different things you can do with the pocketbooks. That's what makes them so cool is you can customize the layout and uh, appearance and there's a whole bunch of different set settings in here. You can uh, some different keyboard options, different um, user profiles if you're going to share the device with someone. Like I said, key mapping, I really like this. You can go in and set different functions for all the um, buttons on here. For long press, uh, you see you got a whole bunch of different options there. Um, so uh, the one thing I was talking about with the appearance is you can change the, um, not only can you change the, the themes and 
logos and stuff like this, let's go ahead and change the full page update. So you got different settings for three pages, five pages, and ten pages. This way the pages turn a lot faster. When you go into an ebook. But you might get a little artifacting um, because it doesn't refresh the whole page. See how it does that? It doesn't do the refresh, but every third page or however you set it. So it's kind of a cool setting, like the new Nook has that, but you don't have any options. It just does it every sixth page. You don't have any options to turn it on or off. Sometimes if you're using like a, a image heavy book, the, a lot of times images will um, sort of show up on the next page. But when you're using text like this, it shows up, uh, it seems to work pretty well and the page turns are actually quite fast. So some other options we have in here, you've got the table of contents. This things like here, it's obviously, and it's got uh, multiple levels. You've got um, notes. So how notes work is it brings this little cursor down and then you can highlight a section and then save it. You can also go in and if you want to go into the contents to view that note, it's right there and you get some different options if you hold down on it. If you maximize it, you can actually view it right here and then you can view or you can add text to it if you want. You can add some text right there. Um, so with the keyboard on the has this little on-screen keyboard with the Pocketbook 360. It's actually a little bit awkward to use, but because um, it always starts out in this middle, I kind of wish it just had the default like a regular keyboard does, where it stays at the same letter you're at. But uh, so it does take a little bit of getting used to, but uh, it does work effectively. So let's back on out of here. Some other options, like I said, you got the dictionaries. You can show different dictionaries. I showed you that already. And then you've got uh, bookmarks. You can add bookmarks. It uh, folds the corner up there. I think you can have up to 30 bookmarks per book. Um, you got the page open, you got search, all the regular stuff. Um, you can also, it's also got an uh, accelerometer built in, so if you just want to switch the page orientation, it'll do it automatically. You can also go turn that off in the settings if, uh, if, if you just want it to stay one way. And then you can also, like I said, you can set these to have different functions. Um, you, they can skip 10 pages ahead or whatever, you can set these stuff like that up in the um, settings menu. Okay, let's go back to the home screen. Let me show you a couple of other features here. Show you just how the ebooks work. Um, let me show you a couple of other things really quickly. Um, I'll show you how some PDFs work. So obviously you can put everything in here in just the folders or you can put them on the ebooks. The manuals over here as well. So I got some other formats on here. Um, Go ahead and show um, an e or a PDF. Like I said, if you hold down, you get the option to open it with Adobe Viewer or PDF Viewer. And also, you got the other options right there where you can delete them and move them to the SD card if you want. So let's go ahead and jump to page 17, I think. So the buttons, I guess, on the Pocketbook 360 original were quite loud or kind of difficult to use. These ones aren't as loud. If you push them in the middle, they're actually just uh, you can barely hear them if you push them right there in the middle. So PDFs, they have a lot of options. Pocketbook's um, got a lot of options for PDFs. You've got these different zoom options. So you've got normal, you can zoom it in all the way up to a bunch of, you can use different percentages that goes by 10% on this particular one. Um, and then there's, you, know, you got the fit by width, and there's this feature where you can preview uh, multiple pages at once. So they've got a lot of, um, they've got a lot of features for PDFs compared to a lot of the other readers. So there's actually, uh, you can view nine pages at once too. Um, there's also the settings over here for columns. If you have PDFs with different columns, you can set it up and it will scroll down the column. And then there's also reflow as well if you just want to view the text and uh, get rid of the uh, um, columns. So then you use these buttons right here to scroll up and down the pages when there's um, different settings and it also zooms them with this particular setting. So otherwise you had the other features, you've still got the notes and you've still got rotate and all that stuff. Let's see if the dictionary works in here. I'm surprised. Sometimes PDFs and some e readers they don't work with uh, the dictionary, but this one it clearly is working quite well. Then you get to the different settings down here in the um, dictionary where you can set up different um, dictionaries in here. You can also import different dictionaries. They have some sort of dic dictionary converter that you can use as well. Um, so that's some different things with PDFs. Let me go ahead and show you um, some options here for the applications menu. Oh, let me show you this really quick. This is really cool. So you can just come in here and import news or um, 
add news feeds, what you do is you just type the URL. It does take a little bit of time initially because the keyboard, like I said, takes a while. But then once you get that set up, you can automatically download or download the news feeds right here. So you just enter the URL of the news feed, and then you hit update, and it will show up on here. Let me go ahead and connect to the internet. This might take a couple of seconds. Connect to Wi-Fi. So here it is, the um, page loads. This is uh, the one I have loaded up for. This is actually my URL from the ebookreader.com. So you can get set up uh, different news feeds on here, and then what it does is uh, it sets it up in an easy read structure like this, and you can um, go through it like this. Let's go ahead and you click on one, and it will take if it if it has the full articles. Otherwise, it'll open the browser, and you can go into the few articles like this, and you use the page string buttons to scroll. It even has the comments right there, so that's kind of a cool feature you got on here. That's not something that comes with other e-readers. They usually just try to sell you newspaper subscriptions, so that's kind of a cool setup. Um, there's also, well, let me show you this really quick. In the book setting, you've got the Bookland. So you can come in and buy e-books from Bookland, which is Pocket Books' version of an e-book store. It's a little bit hard to navigate. Um, really, the nav navigation with the browser does take some time. It definitely takes some patience. You use these arrows to go through all the active hyperlinks. Um, the one thing... Um, so this is essentially like the browser, but it's not exactly like the browser. And you can come down here, scroll through the bestsellers and whatnot, um, set up an account with them. But I'm going to go ahead and show you the web browser right now. Instead, let's go back down here to Applications, Browser. So we've got some other applications in here as well. There's Calculator, there's Chess, there's a few different things. One thing that's odd about the calculator is you can't back out. So we'll have to go back to the home menu. So the other ones you can back out of by holding that button, but for some reason the calculator doesn't do that. So like I said, there's a couple of games on here. You've got some, like, Snake. Oops, that was quick. Okay, so like I was saying with the browser here, since it has Wi-Fi, you can um, set it up. I went ahead and went over to Feedbooks, downloaded a couple of e-books, and that works fine. They automatically show up on the root level of the folder back in your books um, folder. One thing I can't figure out with the, the web browser, it doesn't seem to be any bookmarks. If you could add bookmarks, it'd be pretty um, a lot more usable because then you could just quickly jump to a page, but I haven't found how to do that yet. So you've got to use these arrows to move around the um, hyperlinks on the page, and then you can use these buttons to scroll around when you have a page loaded. I'm not going to load it right now because I'd have to enter the URL, and that would take quite a while. Um, if I could find a way to set bookmarks, it would be a lot easier. But uh, at least you can use it. You can uh, download ebooks, so that is a, it's a nice feature to have if you um, if you're looking for that um, type of functionality. Just other couple quick details. You've got a calendar app down here, um, so there's some different options for other apps too. Pocketbook has some on their website, and like I said, you got some in the menu, settings menu over there. You can view photos on here. Um, another cool thing is it has screenshots. So um, I have it set up, you double tap the top button and you get screenshots and it saves it into a folder in the photo menu right here. Um, this is taking forever, but there we go. So you've got the screenshots there, you've got your photos right there. Um, another thing, you've got the notes section, which is easily accessible from your home screen where you've added notes to all your books. Um, and it comes into the table of contents, you can view your notes, bookmarks. So I had the manual bookmark right here because it shows the all the formats that it supports. I don't know if it will show up on here, but you've got a whole bunch of formats it supports. I'll put that also on the written review, so check that out on ebookreader.com. So actually, I'm going to wrap up this review right here. Um, I will cover more details on the ebookreader.com's written review, so check those out. Um, thank you for watching.